Hi everyone, so today I am out with a different dog, as you can see, I have got Tia with me. She is my wildling of a Springer Spaniel. Um, and what we're going to look at today is I'm going to talk through my use of the clicker and how I might introduce that to a dog and how I use it because I've had a lot of questions about that recently and we're also going to have a look at some of the engagement games that I play um, particularly with Tia to try and get a bit of focus when we're out in environments that she finds particularly distracting. Now I've decided to do this with Tia because we haven't done a lot of training recently so this is a good way to get myself out and up and get her engaging with me a little bit more when we're out. Um, and also she does find the environment very very challenging so hopefully this is a very real life example of how we work through those exercises all right let's wish me luck and we'll give it a go ready so this is the clicker that I use. I use a button clicker, but there are a few different types that you can choose. Um, I just get mine off of Amazon. I will include a link to where I've got this particular one um, in the description below, but they're generally quite cheap and cheerful. I particularly like these ones though because they have the wrist strap, so it's just easy access for when I need to use it. So... The reason I use the clicker is because I think it makes the training process easier for my dogs because they understand what they did right and therefore they know what behaviour to repeat again in the future in order to earn reinforcement. So I use the clicker to mark the moment that my dog does the behaviour that I'm after. So in these sessions that we're going to be going through in this video, eye contact is often one of the behaviours that I'm going to be looking for. So when my dog looks at me, I will click to mark that moment that they did the right thing. And then I will follow that click with some form of reinforcement. So the idea is that the dog knows that whatever they were doing when they heard that magic click sound is the right behaviour. And that's what earned them the reward. And therefore, that's what they should repeat again in the future. And that was a very quick overview of the clicker. But I would say if you're looking to introduce a clicker to your training, the two things that are going to help make you successful are one, making sure your timing is on point so that you are clicking at the right moment to mark the behaviour that you wanted. And the second thing for me is making sure that you always follow up that click with some form of reward for your dog. If you do those two things right, then I don't think you can go too far wrong with it. So to start out with, if I'm working with a dog that's never heard the clicker before, I like to spend a bit of time teaching them the association that the click means they're going to get some reinforcement. So you'll see with Tia in a moment, I click and then I deliver food. I then wander about a bit, I click and then I deliver food. And in this exercise, whilst I'm teaching her the association, it does not matter what she's doing. So sometimes she's walking when she hears that click, like that time. Sometimes she's stationary, like that time. Really doesn't matter. The only consistent thing here is that click gets followed with a reward. And if I was doing this with a new dog, I'd start in a low distraction environment. You might do a handful of repetitions a few times a day for a week or so um, to help build a really strong association that they understand that that click means a reward is coming. Now this stage isn't essential, um, but sometimes I think it can help speed up that learning process. And then we start using the clicker for some engagement games. So my criteria here is that I want her to look at me. I want her to give me eye contact. And when she gives me eye contact, I click and then I deliver reinforcement. So with this game, I'm delivering the food on the floor. So I'm moving her focus away from me and then she has to make the choice to re-engage with me by looking at me in order for the game to continue. Then she gets to have a little bit of a break by having a sniff around in the bushes behind the camera before we move on. So that's a game that I call the up-down game because their head goes up to look at you and then it goes back down to get the food off the floor. And then that's just repeated. So now we're moving on to a different game that involves a bit more movement and a bit more distance between Tia and I. And so that's why you'll see that I've got my long line out. And that's also why she's wearing a harness during this session. So Tia is the sort of dog that will bog off when she feels like she's under too much pressure. And so... I want to prevent her from running away 
um, well we're in the middle of a training session and so I've got the long line and throughout the session I will have my foot on the long line so that she can't get too far away and if I start to trust her a bit my, I might leave it trailing but I've got the option to use it as a break if I need to but that's also why she's wearing a harness during the session because if she does bog off and I have to stop her with the long line I don't want her to have a sudden jolt through her neck if it was attached to her collar it's much more comfortable for her if that happens through her chest and so you'll see she's got this white front harness it's a perfect fit harness and it's just a little bit safer for her if that does happen now ideally I'd rather she doesn't have to use a long line or a harness but I've got the dog that I've got and I need to manage the situation appropriately and so that's what I'm doing so I start this game in the same way I started the last game so when she's focused on me I click and deliver food to the floor I start off putting the food close to me so that I can make sure she is engaged in the game and then I gradually start to throw it further and further away from me so she has to chase after it. Now on that occasion she tried to just run away which is exactly why I've got her on the long lead and that's why I've got my foot on the long lead to stop that so that allows her to not get the distance away from me and then I can re-engage her with finding the piece of food wait for her to reorient back to me, click, and then throw food out again. Now, she clearly wasn't in a very good mood for sniffing and searching today because she's not found that one, but I allow her the time to search for it until she then looks up to me to help. And then I go and help her, so we go and find the food together. And then again, I just wait until I get that focus back on me and we start the game again. So with this, it's when she reorients back to me that I'm looking to click to mark that engagement with me and then she gets to chase after the other piece of food. And when she starts to get into the flow of this game, she really enjoys it because it combines lots of her favourite things. She gets to chase after things, she gets to sniff and search and she gets to run whilst all doing it in a way where she is engaging with me and she is earning all of that good stuff through paying attention to me in this environment. So we do a few more repetitions back and forth and then I give her a break and we decided to move to a different location to see how we can play this sort of game with a different reinforcer. So we move out to the fields which is a location that Tia finds far more interesting than the kind of playing field area that we were before um, and we are going to use her ball to play this game. So the ball is Tia's absolute favourite thing. And so I will often use this as her reward when we're in more interesting environments. So my criteria for this game is that she stays focused on me once I've taken the ball, rather than disengaging and going into the environment. So I pause for a second, if she keeps that focus on me, I click and then I reward her with the opportunity to chase after the ball. And then I start to building a little bit more duration to the game, so I wait a little bit longer before I click and then I deliver the reward. So it's a very similar game, just using a toy as a reward rather than food. And then what I like to do with this is that I then start to ask Tia for behaviour. So I take the ball, we have focus, and then I'll ask her to do a bit of heel work with me, and then I'll click and reward with the ball. I'll take the ball and then I'll ask for a sit stay and then once that behaviour is complete, I'll click and reward the ball. So we start to build that in to get a little bit of training when we're in these more interesting environments. And then at the end of any training session I do with Tia, I let her have the opportunity to run around and decompress a little bit. Now there are a few different ways that I do that, but in today's session I gave her the opportunity to do her style of hunting. Now I will say here that uh, Tia is not a working done dog, she's never going to do a real day's work in her life, bless her. Um, so this is very loose and free form, but the idea is that as we're walking along I throw tennis balls down around near my feet and then she gets to find them. When she finds them we have a big celebration and then I give her the opportunity to chase after it. She brings it back and then we start searching again. So the idea is she's free from the long line so she's not got any frustration from that. Um, she is doing what she wants to do but she's doing it close to me, she's finding good stuff around me and so I'm still getting engagement with her whilst we're doing this activity. And so this is the last activity that I'm doing with Tia during her outing.
but I think it's important to make note that after this I spend a decent amount of time helping her to cool back down and when I'm talking about that I'm talking both emotionally as well as physically so she is going to be pumping full of adrenaline right now and so I need to make sure that she has efficient time to start to settle back down before she gets home so that she gets home and is in a position where she is able to rest and relax and recover. So I do that by just popping her on lead at the end of the session and then we walk calmly home. Often I'll give her a bit of a scatter feed as we're on that walk home just so that she can really start to calm down um, and I just think it's something that's really important that people often forget about so particularly for dogs like Tia I would definitely recommend introducing cool downs into your sessions but that's it for now so as always if you have any tips any advice or any questions please feel free to pop them in the comments below and if not thanks for watching